أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In this session, we are going to introduce confirmatory factor analysis. Now, confirmatory factor analysis is a statistical technique that analyzes how well your indicators measure your unobserved constructs. And if your unobserved constructs are uniquely different from one another, so what is your unobserved construct? Your unobserved construct is, let's say, job satisfaction that is observed or measured through five or six items. Let's say your other unobserved construct in the study may be your engagement or job engagement measured through four or five items. So what CFA does is it analyzes how well your indicators that are used to measure the unobserved constructs, they are uniquely different from each other. In CFA, an unobservable construct is often referred to as a factor. So when we are doing CFA and we've got two variables, they are rather referred to as factors. So when we use the term factor, it actually represents the unobservable construct, maybe job satisfaction or engagement. In a diagrammatic format, an unobserved variable is represented by a circle or oval, as mentioned in the first lecture of the series. And the indicators that measure the unobserved variable will have single-headed arrows coming from the unobserved construct to each of the indicators. So there is an arrow coming from your job satisfaction factor or construct towards the observed indicators represented by a square. Now each indicator is represented by a square or a rectangle and the single headed line directly from the factor or the unobservable construct to the indicator represents the influence that is reflected from the unobservable construct to its indicator that is your reflective construct. Statistical estimates of these direct effects are called factor loadings. So whatever your estimation you are making here that is flowing from your unobservable construct to the indicator, it's called factor loading. And this shows how well the items are representing the underlying construct. And they are often interpreted as regression coefficients and that may be in unstandardized or standardized form. So they can take these two forms. Now, indicators that reflect an unobservable construct or factor are called simply reflective indicators. Now, let me show you a brief example of it. So here, so these are your indicators. This is your construct, unobservable construct, and these are your error terms. So the arrows are pointing from your unobservable construct to the indicators. And when we run the model, we've got statistical figures here on these arrows they show factor loading or regression weights or regression coefficient as they are may be called now coming back now with most indicators a level of error is present each measurement error of an indicator represents a unique variance or variance that is not explained so not all variance is explained by the individual items. Some of the, uh, the variance may be left behind and that is represented in the error. So measurement errors are represented by two types of unique variance. They may be random error or systematic error. So a random error occurs when the measurement of a concept is unpredictably fluctuating due to unforeseen or random influences. So it's not in your control. This type of error is considered noise because there is often no consistency to the measurement error. Whereas systematic error is different in that the error is systematic in nature. The results of a measurement can be consistently high or low due to systematic influence in the measurement of a concept. Let's take an example. Taking a survey online as compared to a paper and pencil survey may systematically influence the way respondents answer to a question about a construct. Now with systematic error, this is often classified as a bias compared to noise of random error, something that is not in, in your control and something that you can control. Note, 
that if an unobserved variable has only one indicator, then the error term for the single indicator variable is constrained to have a mean of 0 and a variance of 0. You must assume the indicator has no measurement error, which is often a very flawed assumption. That's why you need to have multiple items measuring the unobservable construct. Now, in confirmatory factor analysis, you also want to account for unmeasured covariance. To do this, you actually need a two-headed arrow drawn between the independent and your dependent variable or all the unobserved variables. Now in CFA, the analysis will treat all unobserved variables like this as exogenous or independent variables. Thus, you will draw a covariance or double-headed arrow between all your unobservable construct. If you don't do this, AMOS will give you an error message. So when you are making or developing your measurement model with more than one construct or one factor, you actually need to covary the unobserved variables with the two-headed arrow. Now, how is CFA different from EFA? Now, an exploratory factor analysis is useful in data reduction, reduction of large number of indicators into meaningful or helpful group of factors. Whereas, EFAs are initially the first step in determining if an indicator is measuring a construct. So, whether a particular indicator belong to that particular construct or not. And in an EFA, the researcher is not denoting which indicators are measuring a construct. It's, it's exploration of items, whether a particular item belongs to a particular construct or not. Now, the analysis simply tries to let every indicator load on every single construct. And this is where cross-loading can occur. Where an indicator is actually loading strongly on one or more than one construct, this is a concern that your indicator is not a strong measure of the specific const construct. Now, if a particular indicator is loading onto more than one factor, then this particular indicator is, does not belong to a specific construct and shall be deleted in case of EFA. Whereas in CFA, we know our indicators and we know to which construct or factor these indicators belong. And CFA does not allow the indicators to load on one or more construct. The researcher prior to the analysis will specify the indicators and its underlying construct. And those indicators can only load on that specified construct. Other ways that an EFA and CFA are different is an EFA is typically concluded with correlation matrices which can be problematic in comparing parameters across samples. Whereas CFA uses covariance matrix and is more adept at handling comparison across samples. An EFA will also consider data rotation that is often done to achieve a better loading of indicators on a construct or sometimes a reduction of cross-loading with other construct. So you have a rotated component matrix that helps you assess which item actually belongs to which construct. Whereas CFA, it actually does not worry about rotation because you are denoting the specific items to a particular construct. Now, if you want to know more about CFA, here are the references. Very good books to learn SAM and AMOS. Thank you very much.